Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. learners welcome to the session of managerial economics i am dr supriya jain working as an assistant professor in the institute of business management at glu university mathura so let us start with our today's session and we we'll have a look on the topics which we have covered in our previous session particularly we have talked about how the interaction between the different uh, sector takes place in the economy so we have seen the circular flow of economic activities as well as income in two sector as well as in the four sector economy so if you recall back we can see that uh, there are two types of flow takes place between these sectors one is called as real flow and the other is monetary flow the flow which is taking place in terms of money is been known as monetary flow and the flow in the form of physical form of goods and services they have been considered as in real flow So, in two-sector economy, we have seen the interaction of households and firm, and how these two actors are interacting with each other, keeping into consideration their requirement. Household people wants to have goods and services for the satisfaction of their needs and wants, and for the purchase of these goods and services, they require money. So, how and from where are they going to earn their income? and if we look at the other side of the sector where we have firms who wants to produce these goods and services and for the production of these goods and services they want factors of production so that they also uh, be able to earn income or to generate profit so from where are they going to get these factors of production the household people provide them factors of production so factors of production uh, moves from household towards the firm and firm makes payment to these factor services right and with this income which has been earned by the household people they buy the goods and services from the firm and then they make their consumption expenditure so see the goods are coming from the firms to the households for the satisfaction of their needs and wants and the amount which they have earned in form of their income they give it back to the firm by the way of consumption expenditure so the kind of flow it has been created would be called as circular flow and as we all know we as a human being and we behave rationally so we do not spend the entire money on the consumption of goods and services rather we save this money for our future requirements as we know future is uncertain it is risky right so we always try to keep some money for our future consideration so what do we do we take out some money from this uh, circular flow right and the withdrawal of the money from the circular flow which we do in the form of savings right would be considered to be as an leakage because the money which was in a flow was been taken out so they are been considered as an leakages and now this money which we have taken out we usually keep this money in the financial market right we can buy shares we can buy bonds or we can have uh, some fixed deposits right so we can keep this money in the financial market for our future references and now what this financial market is going to uh, do with this money which they are receiving from the household people they further invest this money into the firm to earn uh, more profit onto it or to earn good interest on it right so the money which has been injected again which was taken out by the household people in the form of leakages now with the way of investment it has been injected again into the circular flow of economic activities and income right so we have these two considerations also where we needed to understand about the concept of leakages as well as the injection now we have also seen the interaction of government as well as foreign nation because any economy government plays a significant role and if we talk about the economy of india where we have the mixed economic system right government plays a very important role so we also interact with the government on regular hand and we are interacting with the foreign nation because we are our economy is always dependent on the other economies by the way of import and export export and with this emergence of globalization right so to look at the bigger picture of the economy we have included this government as well as foreign nation right so how household people are interacting with the government as many of us are also working in the government organizations and we do receive salary from the government 
So government uh, also pay payments to the household people and whatever the income we are earning, we need to pay taxes on the income, right? As we have seen further, uh, how to calculate this personal disposable income. So whatever the income you are earning, you need to pay taxes on them and the remaining income you can dispose of, right? So it is the responsibilities of the household to discharge the taxes on the income which they are earning. Same way, government also provide, for, you know, subsidies. They provide remittance for purchase to the firms, right? For the growth and development of the economy, for the betterment of the economy. And in the same case, the goods and services which are being produced by the firm, they also need to pay taxes on it, right? So this is how government is connected. And government is also uh, related to the financial market because we are also investing in the bonds as well as, you know, uh, you know uh, securities which are being provided by the government organization and government also interact with the foreign nation, right? So if you look at the foreign nation, we also interact with the foreign nations by the way of export and import at individual level as well as at the firm level. So this kind of a bigger picture was seen uh, in the circular flow of economic activities and income. And with the understanding of this circular flow, we get to know how economic activities take place. So when we talk about macroeconomics in large, macroeconomics gives us the idea of understanding how things take place, how economy works. Because to have a better decision making in our individual organization regarding the demand, what will be the demand in the economy, how are we going to produce the goods, how much resources are available in the economy, right? What to produce, when to produce, for whom to produce, are the economy used uh, economically, are the resources used economically or not? So all these questions will be answered with the basic understanding of the economy. So for that reason, under this managerial economics, we are talking about this macroeconomic concept which gives us an bird's eye view, right? We are not looking at uh, things in particular, but we are looking uh, things at large scale, right? So as whatever the changes are being taking place in the economy, we would be able to understand them well, and accordingly, we could take our individual firm's decisions, right? Thereafter, we have talked about national income. As we know that national income is one uh, where we can find out how many economic activities have been taken place in the economy, right? How much goods and services are being produced? Okay, so national income is basically the money value. How are we going to add these goods and services together? So what do we do is we take out the money value of all the final goods and services produced in an economy during a financial year, right? We sum, them, uh, sum it up together. So the figure which we arrives at would be considered as a national income, right? So national income of a of any country is an indicator of economic activities, the economic growth taken place, right? And that is the reason uh, for which we are calculating this national income because it indicates the economic, uh, economic welfare taken place in the economy, right? So we have uh, also understood the various measures of calculating national income. We have talked about GDP, GNP, uh, NDP and NNP. GDP and GNP are the gross values and in GDP we calculate uh, the goods and services produced within the domestic territory, whereas in GNP we include all the goods and services produced uh, within uh, the country by, by the citizens of India, whether in the domestic territory or if they are outside the domestic territory. So here one important component we add to GDP that is NFIA for the calculation of gross national product. And this NFIA is a difference between the payments which we are making to the foreign nationals working in our country and the income received by the Indians working outside the country. And to arrive at the figure of net values, we need to deduct depreciation from the gross value. So if you, are, if you want to calculate NDP and NNP from the value of GDP and GNP, then we need to deduct the depreciation. And what is depreciation? Depreciation is basically the amount which we deduct every year from our fixed assets, right? By the way of wear and tear, right? So they, they, uh, they value depreciate every year so that depreciation when we deduct from the gross values will be able to arrive at the net values. And for the calculation of national income, we have discussed various methods, right? Like we have income method, we have product method, and we can also calculate it by the expenditure matter with that belief that these are the three important phases and the activities which are being taken place in the economy. Because how much goods are going to be produced? Accordingly, the income generation would have taken place and whatever the income is being 
earned by the people accordingly they would be able to make their expenditure. So, ideally if you are calculating this national income by either of these methods, we would be uh, you know getting the same figure, but we have also seen the uh, limitations and disadvantages you can say of various methods. So, there are certain problems which we across, uh, come across with. Right. So, therefore, the figures might differ in real sense whenever we calculate it, but yes for sure uh, we can go ahead with any of these methods with, uh, for the calculation of national income. So, this is what we have covered in our previous session, but the understanding of these topics are very much clear for understanding the next topic which we are going to cover in our today's class where we are going to talk about business cycle. So, let us have the uh, look of the learning objectives, what all are you going to learn with the understanding of business cycle. Here you will be able to examine the intricacies of business cycle and what are the causes of this cycle, right? what causes the cycles to happen and how uh, you are going to understand their effects as well. right? So, how it is going to impact uh, the firms as well as the working of uh, the people in the economy. Secondly, you will also be able to develop a critical understanding of various theories, right. There are different theories which propounds why this happens, why there are different phases and the cycle takes place in the economy. And then finally, you will be able to comprehend the measures, right. What are the measures like what, what precautions are being taken up by the firms as well as by the government so as to control it. For sure, we cannot uh, you know avoid these things which are happening in the economy, but yes by taking some precautionary measures or by uh, you know uh, controlling them definitely we can minimize their effect. So, let us start with what business cycle is right. As the name is helping you to understand and we have also talked about how we are uh, you know deciding different kind of pricing uh, through the phases of business cycle. Business cycle is basically considered as an up and down movement taking place in the economic activities, right. So, whenever we talk about economic activities, it relates to the goods and services which are being produced in the economy. So, if a change taking place in those economic activities, the up and down movements which are taking place, that is being referred to as a business cycle. And how are we measuring these changes? We measure these changes with the help of GDP, right. GDP is a measurement of national income like we have discussed it and it is helping us to know how much goods and services are being produced in an economy right? during a financial year. So, if the goods and services produced in an economy are not uh, as per the requirement or if they are reducing, right? if, 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 if the demand is reducing definitely the production will be less. So, that means our economy is in a downward phase. But when our economy demand is more or demand for goods and services are more then definitely the production will be more that means our economy is in a contraction phase. So, to understand the changes taking place in the business cycle or, or the economic activity we measure it with the help of GDP. Now, look at the features or you can call them as in characteristics right. Why does it happen? Why these up and down movements are taking place? What causes these changes right? So, for understanding of business cycle we have these uh, features where we have classified them into uh, three points. We have periodicity, synchronism and self reinforcing. Now, what is meant by this periodicity? Periodicity basically helps you to understand that the changes which are taking place in the economy, these up and down movements which we are talking about, they take place after a period of time, right. It, 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 it does not mean that if, if our economy is going down today, it is going to go up tomorrow, no that is not possible, right. If some uh, change is taking place in the economy and business cycle says that economy is going downward, so it continues to go downward for a period of time right it does not happen uh, in overnight right there is a considerable time frame uh, in that period only these up and down movements takes place and generally uh, with the study we say that these changes takes place usually with the period of 6 to 12 years there is no definite period definitely we have different time frames ok uh, it, it cannot be said that it will take place after 6 years or maybe after 12 years this is the range which we are defining right usually the changes takes place during the period of 6 to 12 years as per the past study and the analysis which has been made but one thing is for sure that it takes place after a period of time so that is what periodicity says 
Second is synchronism. Now, look at the effect. Why this happened, right? It happens because of the interdependence of the economy of one sector over the another sector. We have already seen the circular flow of economic activity, how the things are moving from one place to the another place, only the forms are changing, but this, these kind of flows are making a circular flow and which helps you to understand the interdependence of various factors in the economy. Right, I will give you one example to make it more clear. Right, suppose if the demand of electronic goods are increasing, right? So, if in the economy the demand for electro electronic goods will increase, definitely their production will increase. And when the production of these goods will increase, the demand for raw material will increase. So, the suppliers of uh, those raw material will get the business, right? People will advertise more because more firms will be there to supply these goods as because this uh, there is a demand in the market. So, when competitors will be there, people will spend more money on the advertisement for the promotion of those goods so that they can stimulate more uh, demand of their commodity. So, you can see the impact is embarrassing. It is passing on one person to the another. So, if there is a demand for one product and then demand for that product has also increased the demand for other things in the economy, right? Suppliers were getting business, the people who were supplying raw material to those uh, for those goods, their demand will increase, the demand for advertisement in the market will increase, income of the people will also increase because when there will be a more production taking place in the economy, the higher employment will be there, right? Uh, people will get more jobs, right? And with good jobs and more jobs, people will have more income. And with this more income, they will further demand things more, right? So, this is how the synchronism effect will take place, right? And if you will, uh, you know, understand this example in an opposite way where we are considering suppose the demand for these goods are decreasing, right? Suppose the demand for electronic goods reduces, right? Then, then what will happen? The demand for these goods will reduce, uh, we will demand less from the suppliers, some of the firms will leave the industry looking at the lesser demand in the market, then uh, people might also lose their job because people, uh, you know, suppliers will leave the market and the existing supplier will reduce their uh, production, right? Uh, when employment will not be there, people will not be able to generate income. Then in if income will be not be there, then demand will not be there. So, all these things are having a synchronization effect, right? Which passes on from one uh, sector to the another sector and this is how these things takes place, right? So, this is what uh, this uh, synchronism feature tells us and why these up and down movements are taking place in the economy. So, this effect passes on after a period of time, okay. Altogetherly, all these sectors are not going to get affected, but definitely their impact is going to pass on, right. And that is why we are saying that happens after a period of time. Then if you look at the third part of it, where we are saying it is self-reinforcing, right. Self-reinforcing is just uh, you know, a step ahead of synchronization. In synchronization, we have seen the interdependence of various sectors in the economy, whereas the self-reinforcing feature says that whenever you are in a specific phase of the economy, maybe it, uh, it is an, uh, you know, upward phase or it is a downward phase, that particular phase will reinforce you, right? You will be self-enforced to be a part of that phase in the economy, right? When the economy grows up, even if you are not putting your business uh, to, the, to that, that particular level, then definitely you will get a push, right? Because everything around you uh, gives you a positive response, right? Uh, people will demand more of the goods and definitely the demand for your uh, good will increase even if you are not spending much of your money on the advertisement as well, right? So, self-reinforcing factor will further give you a push and then these uh, wave life movements are supposed to be taken up to the higher position. Suppose when economy is uh, in the expansion phase, the economy is going upward. So, the self-synchronization uh, factor is helping the economy to move in the upward phase, but this self-reinforcing factor will further make a push to the economy and help you to reach at the peak, right, at the uh, top of the expansion phase, right. And same way the self-reinforcing factors also work in the contraction phase when the economy is going downwards, then this uh, factor will further push the economy to go down and reach to the bottom point, right. So, uh, because of all these things we are having. Uh, they are in the business cycle and that is why we see these changes taking place. So, I hope these three points are clear to every one of you where we have talked about periodicity and talking about the time frame, the period after which this upward movement and the downward movements are going to take place. Synchronization help us to understand the interdependence of various sectors of the economy, whereas self-reinforcing factor help us to understand why 
we are we enforced ourselves to be a part of that phase and how this uh, factor pushes the economy towards the upper side of the uh, phase or to the downward side of the phase right now let us move further and look at the phases of business cycle as business cycle phases uh, need to be understood very carefully what are the different phases we have in business cycle so typically what we say is we study the phases of business cycle into four categories we have expansion phase peak contraction which is also called as recession and the last phase is called as trough and the another name is depression right so these are the four phase phases we have in uh, business cycle and then we can say that we have two turning points as well right in business cycle we have two turning points like you can see here uh, this is the expansion phase you can see here on the x axis we are representing the time uh, you know the time frame which is which we are representing in the terms of years because this happens uh, you know in a period of time and that is usually in years right and here you can understand that we are uh, calculating it in terms of gdp or gnp gdp is the domestic income whereas gnp is a national income so these are the measures we have taken here and this g uh, g is indicating the growth of the economy right so when the economy is going up when we are into this upward phase we call it as an expansion right so this synchronization factor helps the economy to have this expansion phase and with this self reinforcing factor we reach up to the peak point now you can see after reaching to this peak point now further expansion after this is not possible now this is the highest expansion possible taken place in the economy now economy will see a downward phase so this is here we are having this turning point where economy is going to get into this contraction phase which is also called as a recession right so again when we, uh, we with the self reinforcing factor we goes down to the bottom uh, line of this uh, phase in the economy which is represented with the trough with the situation called as depression right so here again the economy will see the upward phase and this uh, you know contraction peak expansion all these things will move again okay so this is a cycle which keeps on going right but that keeps coming to the economy after a period of time right so i hope this uh, uh, phases of you know economic business cycles are clear the, the business cycle is also been called as trade cycle so there is an another name you can call it with the trade cycle because the kind of trade we are having in the economy right and uh, whatever the changes taking place in the uh, this cycle is known as business cycle or the trade cycle now let us look about these phases in detail so very first phase is an expansion phase now expansion means the things which when the things are expanding right and why these things are expanding because here uh, you know this is basically the phase you can say which is desirable for all for the consumer as well as for the producers consumer are happy because they are able to have more of income and they can satisfy more of their goods and uh, you know needs and demands whereas it is a phase which is desirable for producer also because they are able to produce more because there is more demand in the market so with the more production they would be able to generate more profit by selling more in the market so this is the desirable phase where all the people of the economy want to enter into it right and this denote uh, this you know terms itself denote that the phase when all macroeconomic variable which we have talked about are increasing like output is increasing because there is more demand in the economy employment is increasing because of the more production we require more people so employment rate is increasing income of the people are increasing because uh, of the employment opportunities they are getting they are generating more income and with that increase in the income their consumption also increases right so this is a very goody goody phase for the economy right and at the same time prices move us yes we, that we will discuss uh, later in this uh, you know lecture itself what will happen during this expansion phase but because the demand is increasing as we all know when demand increases price of the commodities will go up and this uh, you know income also increases the supply of money in the market when income is increasing people are spending more on the consumption of goods and services then definitely the supply of money in the market will increase and look at this self reinforcing feature which we have talked about now this self reinforcing feature where the money supply has increased price of the commodities goes up will push the economy to the upper phase where we are going to go upward right and definitely gradually we will reach to the highest point which is called as peak so looking at the peak what we are saying this is the highest point of growth now at reaching at this point 
further growth and expansion is not possible. So, hence it is referred to as a peak or you can call it as a boom in business cycle, right. When the economy is in boom, then we call it as a highest point of, you know, business cycle and this is the stage beyond which no further expansion is possible and this is the phase which sees the downward turning point. So, like I discussed it earlier in the economic cycle, we see the two downward turning points, one we face after the peak and the another upward turning point will receive after the trough, right. So, in reality, a process of growth conti cannot continue indefinitely, yes, that is uh, very thing to important, uh, important for us to understand. If you are growing, that is for sure we are bound to come down. So, same is the principle applied to the economy also. So, after some time it slows down and thus the turning point comes in the economy, okay. So, if something keeps on growing, it is not possible that it continue to grow forever, right. If you are going up, then you are bound to go down as well, right. So, this is how we understand these expansion and these peak phases. Now, looking at the other side, uh, when we are talking, uh, when the economy is into the contraction phase, which is also called as recession. Now, this is just an opposite to the expansion phase. All those macroeconomic variables which were increasing in the expansion phase, they deduces or they decreases in the uh, contraction phase, right. So, these, uh, this is the phase where workers are willing to work. They want to get, uh, uh, you know, employment. They are seeking for the job, but they are not getting it. Right. Producers also want to produce more, but because of the lesser demand in the economy, they are not able to produce more. So, this is the phase which is not desirable for the consumers as well as for the producer because uh, they are not able to satisfy themselves, right. Uh, consumers are not able to satisfy themselves with the consumption of goods and services because of the lesser income and because of the lesser demand, producers are not able to produce more and cannot able to generate more profit, right. So, all these macroeconomic variables goes down because demand decreases and with the decrease in the demand, the production goes down which creates unemployment in the economy and when there is an unemployment rate which increases, lesser income will reach to the people and then their consumptions also reduces, right. Their expenditure on consumption of goods and services will reduce, which will further reduce the demand for goods in the economy. So, again the self-reinforcing feature when all these things are taking place. So, again the self-reinforcing factor will pushes the economy downwards, right. So, this marks onset of recession, we, when we say that economy is in recession or economy is growing. So, all these things are basically indicating how the recession and this expansion phases are taking place in the economy and we are measuring them with the help of GDP or GNP. And then we have this last phase which is called as uh, trough and the another names of uh, the phase can be slump or you can call it as a depression. Again, this is the lowest ab, right, uh, reaching it to this point. Now, further contraction is not possible. This is the lowest ab of economic cycle. And now, this point will further see a next turning point when new growth process will straight, uh, start afresh, right. So, this is how the changes takes place in the business cycle. I hope the phases are clear to everyone. Now, let us move further where we are going to understand the types of business cycle. Like I said, we have this periodicity feature associated with business cycle which explains us that whatever the movements which are taking place, the expansion phases as well as the contraction phase comes in the economy that comes after a period of time, right. So, to understand it, we have this uh, type of business cycle here uh, which has been, uh, you know, classified by uh, Professor James Arthur and Skim Peter. They, they have uh, explained the different type of business cycle and different time frames uh, during which this business cycle uh, phases occurs. So, the first one is called a short kitchen cycle, right. So, uh, this is the phase which comes for a very smaller period, you can say a very short or a minor period of the cycle that approximately lasts for 40 months of duration. So, if the economy uh, sees this expansion or the contraction phase for a very small period of time and uh, automatically uh, we have changed ourselves to the another phase. Definitely expansion is the phase which is desirable. So, this contraction phase if it is last for a lesser period of time where the economy uh, you know takes some good decisions and uh, you know take, take it economic activities to the higher level and shift uh, itself from the contraction phase to the expansion phase. Uh, very 
quickly than this is uh, the short kitten cycle we call it right which lasts in around 40 months. Then we have this longer jugular cycle right this is again a major cycle and it composed of 3 minor cycles and it uh, usually uh, keep up to the duration of 10 years and so right. So like I said the durations uh, ranging from 6 to 12 years. So that was the longer jugular cycle which came uh, which comes to the economy and it took this much of time for the economy to change their phases. And then we can also have a very long contrifer waves right. So, these are the waves which exist in the economy for a longer period of time right and, uh, and called as very long wave of cycle made of 6 major cycles and may take more than 60 years right. If any economy faces this kind of phase then definitely the development or the other things will go uh, you know very 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 late right. So, definitely nobody wants to take their economy into this very long business cycle phase. Definitely all of us work to finish up these wave like movements during the uh, you know contraction phase which the economy phases so that we can quickly overcome these uh, you know effects of business cycle and we definitely move to the expansion phase which leads us towards the peak point right. So, these are the different cycles which we have and uh, based on the uh, you know existence of these cycles uh, depending upon the time frame here we have discussed it. Now, let us move to the next part. So far we have understood about what business cycle is and what are the different phases we have in this business cycle. Now, let us look at the effect right whenever we are into this expansion phase what kind of impact it is going to create in the economy and when we are into this uh, contraction phase then what will be the effect. So, let us talk about those effects. So, uh, initially we are going to discuss the effect during expansion when the economy is into this expansion phase how it is going to impact. So, basically we can say that uh, the effect the major effect which takes place during the expansion are called as inflation and competition. Since we have seen that this is the expansion phase where the demand of the commodity increases and we have already seen that inflation in comes in the economy. What is inflation? Let us first discuss about what inflation is. Inflation is basically increase in the general price level right. When the price of the commodity increases we call it as an inflation or you can also call it a persistence decline in the income or the purchasing power of the people right. Then also we call it as an in inflation when continuously the price of commodities are increasing. So, we have already seen that during the expansion phase the demand of the commodity increases. So, when demand of the commodity increases that will bring the increase in the price of commodity and inflation is the increase in the general price level. Inflation is basically categorized into two parts where we have price inflation and we call it as in money inflation right. So, inflation can come in both the ways. So, when the price of the commodity increases because of the increase in the demand of goods and services that brings the price inflation right and money inflation because the flow of money or the supply of money in the economy increases then we term it as a money inflation. So, this is these are the uh, two conditions which we are seeing during the expansion phase. During the expansion phase money supply also increases because of more money people are demanding more goods and services and when they are spending more money in the economy then definitely the money supply will also increase right. So, this is for sure you can even say that inflation is the byproduct of expansion. Usually we consider that inflation is not good for the economy right A every economy uh, should control these uh, phases of inflation right or the effect of inflation because some way or the other it is going to impact the people right because their purchasing power will decline and that is not good for the economy right. But definitely we can also say here that inflation up to a point is good for the economy because it is an indicator of growth it indicates that economic activities are going up people are demanding more of goods and services because their income is increasing. So, inflation is not always bad but definitely if after a point of time where only the prices are increasing the general prices of commodities are increasing 
uh, in the proportionate rate uh, with the in increase in the income of the consumer, then it is bad for the economy. But if the income of the consumers are also increasing and the prices of goods and services are also increasing, then it is good for the economy because it is indicating the growth, right. So, inflation is one thing which will be there whenever there is an, inf uh, you know, expansion taking place in the economy. But yes, if inflation increases much, then government has to take out various precautionary measures, how to control this money supply, how to reduce or increase the supply of money into the market, so that uh, they can balance the economy, right. And balancing economy requires the reduction or, uh, you know, expansion in the money supply depending upon the situation. Now, second thing which we see during the expansion is called as competition. Yes, competition increases a lot. Because of the higher demand of goods and services, the existing player will, uh, you know, expand their size of business, right, to cater the demand in the market and new suppliers will also add to the market, right. New firms will also enter into the market. Looking at the demand for goods and services, uh, they will enter to the industry and then what will happen? When we have more of competition, then demand for raw material will increase, people who, uh, who are producing the same goods and services will be demanding more of, uh, raw, you know, uh, raw material uh, in, in, in the same perspective and when the demand for cost of production will increase, it cost will increase, right. We will be getting uh, raw material at the higher cost, we will be getting people, uh, you know, human resource at the higher cost because their demand has increased and with their increase in their prices, the cost of production will go up. And when the cost of production will increase, then further the price of goods will increase because cost is the very important consideration in the calculation of price. No firm is going to, uh, no firm is ready to supply at the price lesser than the cost. Definitely they will try to charge up to the point where they would be able to include their, in, include their cost into the price, right. The different strategies can be used. Maybe for a shorter period of time, you are able to calculate your price on the marginal cost, but that will not exist for a longer period of time, right. That strategy can be taken up for the short period. So, one thing which we need to understand, these again these impacts are interrelated, right. As we have talked about, inflation is increase in the price level also. So, how the prices are increasing? Pricing are increasing because of the increase in the competition, right. When we have more suppliers, they are uh, producing more, then demand for the production of goods and services will reduce, uh, will increase, which will increase their price and increase in the price of factors of production will increase the cost, right. And then these costs will increase the price of the goods and services. And when the price of these goods and services are increasing, we name it as an inflation, right. So, this is how uh, the effect takes place during the expansion phase, though this is a phase which is a desirable phase for the people in the economy, either for the consumer or for the producer, but definitely whenever the expansion will take place, we uh, are seeing the effect of uh, inflation and competition in the economy. And one more thing happens because of this, as we know the competition increases, people will spend more on non-productive activities like advertisement, right. Whenever there is more of competition taking place in the market, then the suppliers spend more money on the advertisement of those goods and services so that they can increase their demand, they can increase their sales. But the spending of money in all these activities will be of non-productive nature and uh, the money supply will be increased, but the production will not increase in that proportion, right. So, we will not be able to count that all, uh, you know, expenditure which is taking place in the economy will not be added to the GDP, right. So, GDP is not actually going to increase, right, GDP will remain, uh, you know, there might be an increase in GDP, but it will not increase to the proportion the spendings or the money supply in the economy increases because of spending of money more in the non-productive activities, right. Uh, because firms try to increase their sales by uh, giving more advertisements, by using more sales promotion activities, right. So, this is the effect which takes place during the expansion phase. Now, looking further, we have the effects of uh, this business cycle during recession as well, right. So, what happened during this recession phase when the, you know, demand goes down? So, these are the three effects which are written here. The first one is excessive inventory. Yes, some of the firms, uh, you know, have to face this problem of excessive inventory who have not, uh, you know, 
uh, predicted their demand in advance or who have not analyzed this situation better because this does not comes with any in the alarm right when you are working in the phase of the economy and uh, gradually you get into this contraction phase so there is no alarm like a situation which is uh, you know giving you a kind of a uh, hint that the economy is going to get into the contraction phase please stop your reduction production or reduce your size of production so that comes very naturally right so you usually during the expansion phase because the firms are having more demand so what they do is they they produce in a larger quantity and when uh, they have to face the situation of contraction they face the problem of excessive inventory right so excessive inventory if it is it will be there either in a uh, finished form or in a semi finished form or maybe in a raw material form that is again a problem for the firm right because you need to now spend more money for its maintenance if it is of uh, you know perishable nature then there can be a major loss even if it is of durable nature then you need to spend more money and to take care of all these inventories right so this will actually block the capital of the firm already the demand has reduced where you are not able to sell more where you could be able to generate your income or, or profit through the firm and either you have to spend more money on the control and maintenance of this excessive inventory which will create a problem for the firms uh, you know during the recession period so that is why it has been always advisable to analyze the market and look why we are talking about the interdependence of this microeconomics with the macroeconomics okay because if you are not studying the changes taking place in the economy then definitely is all these effects will pass to our individual point right uh, individual firm has to face the impact of all these things so a managerial economist like we have discussed the roles and responsibilities of managerial economist in in our initial lectures where we have seen that managerial economist also provides an economic intelligence right where it provides the knowledge what is happening around in the economy right how how the phases in the business cycle taking place and accordingly we need to make our production so that we can overcome the problem of over production and under production so this in excessive in inventory is uh, the problem which faced by various firms uh, you know in the economy during the recession the next is the retrenchment now retrenchment is basically uh, you can say that whenever there is a recession taking place whenever there is a contraction in the economy the first x falls on the worker right it is the worker who has to face the situation because when there is a production uh, reduction in the uh, demand of the goods and services definitely the production will reduce and to produce lesser goods and services we require less people right uh, we require less factors of production so what we do is usually the uh, producers they start with this retrenchment process where they start lying uh, you know Uh, retrenching their people from the organization laying off people from the organization is termed as retrenchment right so when people will lose their job then it will create more problematic situation in the economy right they left with uh, their employment opportunities now they are you know unemployed and because of this unemployment increases in the economy uh, they they spend less money in the uh, on the uh, you know on the demand of goods and services will reduce so this is again the impact which passes on from one to another right so this retrenchment will be there right people will lose more of their job because of reduction in the demand of goods and services then the another thing which is there is deflation right it is an opposite situation of inflation inflation is where the general price level goes up the price in the goods increases is the inflation whereas when the general prices of the commodities goes down that leads to deflation right and definitely this contraction phase or the recession phase will bring reflation in the economy because of a lesser demand of goods and sub, uh, services and and, and uh, you know a lesser uh, spending on the consumption of goods and services will increase the price of the uh, sorry will decrease the price of these goods and services where producer would like to stimulate their demand right and the pricing strategy like we have seen some of the firm follow the rigid pricing strategy but some of the firms uh, during these expansion and recession phases to control the demand of the product in the market they follow the flexible pricing policy and they reduce the prices of their commodity right so deflation is also one of the effect which takes place in the economy during the recession right so i hope these effects are clear to everyone where we have seen what changes will take place in the economy during the expansion as well as the recession 
So, now as we have understood the effect of uh, you know these phases during the expansion as well as contraction, let us look at the measures right, how we can control these phases right, how we can minimize their effect, definitely we cannot uh, you know stop them to come, they are bound to come as we have already seen when the economy is uh, going through this expansion phase, when we are going to the upward phase of the economy then we are definite to come down right. So, what all we can do is uh, we can take these uh, precautionary measures right, what are these precautionary measures that we will discuss right to control the effect of business cycle. So, uh, basically what we are doing we are taking these steps at two different level right, we, we uh, control the uh, effect of business cycle at firm level as well as by government ok. So, what are the precautionary measures which are to be taken up by the firms because as we all know firms are the main victims of the cycle because this is a business cycle. So, business people are going to affect very much from these phases taking place in the economy right. So, uh, what precautionary measures are being taken up by the firms and what precautionary measures are being taken up by the government to control these effects. So, at the same time we can say that they are, they are the main player in the game uh, regarding the firms and the dichotomy of rules make firms responsibilities more critical as well as crucial. So, what happened during the expansion uh, you know expansion phase firms gain and during the recession phase they suffer, we have already understood this right the interaction of firms during the expansion and the contraction phase. They want to be into the expansion phase, but they are not going to, uh, they, they do not have that choice that they can be always in the expansion phase, right. So, to minimize the impact, so that they would uh, not face much problem during the contraction phase and they would be able to recover themselves faster during this contraction phase, we have these precautionary measures. So, here we have talked about these four areas where business people need to keep into their consideration well, so that they can minimize the impact. So, what are these uh, you know things which they need to take care of? The first in the case of the investment. Now, what is this investment? As we all know uh, business houses needs capital for the running of their business right and usually the investments which are being made or the capital raised in the businesses are into the form of debt and equity right. Uh, we have debt and equity and equity right. So, how we are talking about this debt and equity as we know debts are the you know liabilities for the owner, uh, the, 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 they are the liability for the company whereas, the firm which has been read in terms of equity they are being considered as the owner of the company right. So, we need to maintain the firm have to maintain the balance between the equity and the debt. Ideally, we call the ratio should be 2 is to 1 right, debt should be 1 and equity should be 2. So, 2 is to 1 is the ideal ratio which should be there, but definitely if you are not able to maintain this ideal ratio, then the impact of uh, you know contraction phase will be more on your business ok. Because what happened during the expansion phase, if you have more of equity right, if you have taken money more in the equity form, then equity owners shares the profit and the loss of the company. So, they are good during the contraction phase, but during the expansion phase as because the firm is earning good money. So, you have to share the larger profits with your equity holders right, whereas in case if you have more of debt right, it is desirable to have more of debt during the expansion because that time you are able to earn good money and you are able to give or meet out your liability in the uh, on the at, at the percentage on which you have taken the loan, but that creates a problem for the firms during the contraction phase because during the contraction phase the profit margin reduces or might be they are earning losses even then they have to pay their uh, you know liabilities on the percentage for which they have taken or raised the capital. So, depending upon the phase as we all know uh, the business has to face both these situations, so they cannot choose any of them. So, whenever they are making the investment or whenever they are raising their capitals from the market in the form of debt and equity, they need to be sure enough that what ratio they are going to make right. If they are taking up these ratios, then they, 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 the ideal ratio should be kept into consideration and uh, the effect they are going to face during the expansion and the contraction because of uh, the, 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 the mix of debt and equity in the business has to be taken care of very carefully right. So, the firms who are taking care of these things in advance, they, they definitely 
come up from the contraction phase faster and the firms who are not uh, you know focusing much on these aspects they have to face the problem. The second is in the case of inventory like we have discussed right during the contraction phase usually uh, the firm face the problem of excessive inventory and this excessive inventory brings more cost to them right and so to reduce this cost they need to make their analysis demand analysis and forecasting very carefully in the market so that they can be finding out what changes are taking place in the economy uh, they need to study the macroeconomic variable in advance and should do their productions accordingly right so that they should not face the problem of excessive inventory in future right so excessive inventory or you can say if you are producing lesser than demand right like we are talking about over production and under production if there will be an over production then there will be an excessive inventory but if you are producing lesser than the demand then also you are making the loss so the company will get the benefit when they are going to produce according to the demand in the market and for uh, you know knowing the demand we have talked about various demand forecasting technique depending upon the nature of the commodity depending upon the nature of uh, you know the target audience we are having or the forecasting for which period we are doing either we are forecasting the demand for the short period or we are forecasting the demand for the longer period accordingly we should choose our methods so that we would be able to have uh, the right forecasting of demand and can save ourselves from the problems of over as well as under inventory right then the third point where the firms need to keep their focus is on the product right what is uh, what are the uh, different kind of things which they can get into uh, yes one uh, things which is advisable for the firm is to go for diversification right diversification is a good uh, you can say option which is there for them to minimize the impact of this uh, you know business cycle right and they can quickly come over from this contraction phase so products can be diversified and the diversification again can be done in two different categories one is called as conglomerate diversification and the firms can also go with the concentric diversification now how do we differentiate between conglomerate and concentric diversification conglomerate diversification is that where firms are uh, getting into the different product lines right like we can take an example of tata company we can take an example of reliance they have diversified their products into different product lines tata is into tata motors tata steels tata jewelry and so on right whereas concentric diversification is a kind of a diversification where you are into the same product line but variety, uh, providing the different uh, you know varieties in that particular area like you can have an example of amul right the products which are been uh, supplied by the company they are of uh, you know they are mostly are of dairy products right so that depends because as we have seen the impact of this business cycle is uh, synchronized effect and it is also self reinforcing but that doesn't come all togetherly uh, into one specific area that that passes on to the other sectors gradually right so it is one option which is available to the firm so to diversify their product if, it, if in any case the demand for their one product reduces at least they would be able to overcome those losses with the demand of the other good if it is still good in the market right so this diversification strategy can also work uh, to minimize the impact of this expansion and contraction phase and that is why we see the firms who are working in a diversified area are are, are the most uh, you know are the players which are able to uh, reduce the impact of all these effects better and then we have pricing policy again which is important right what kind of pricing strategies you are using because pricing has to be kept very carefully this generates the revenue to the firm so how you are determining the pricing policy for your product in the market right that is again very important are you opting the flexible pricing or you are following the rigid pricing policy uh, depending upon the nature depending upon the requirement of the situation you should be adjusting your pricing policy as well so these are some precautionary measures which are to be taken up by the firm to control or to minimize the effect of business cycle that can be seen in the terms of investments they are making uh, the inventory the productions which they are making right the products how much they are able to diversify their product more diversification will give them more benefit and then about their pricing policies has to be taken up very carefully now let us look at the measures which are being taken up at the government level as we all know government is responsible and is also accountable 
for whatever the changes taking place in the economy right so government takes also government also make precautionary measures or corrective measures you can say to control the effect of this uh, you know effect of uh, expansion and contraction phase in the business cycle so let us have first uh, look at the monetary measures we divide these measures of government government prepare monetary policies as well as fiscal policy to control the impact of business cycle and these monetary policies are basically those policies which control the supply of money from the market and before we talk about monetary policies this should be clear to every one of you that during the expansion phase the supply of money increases as we all know demand is increasing income is increasing which increases the consumption in the economy level of consumption in the economy and this will increase the supply of money in the market so because the supply of money increases inflation takes place so the government always try to control this supply of money through this monetary policy right so during expansion they are always focusing on reducing the supply of money whereas if you look at the contraction phase which is just an opposite to it where the supply of money decreases because the production reduces because of which income reduces and the consumption level of the uh, con con consumer is also uh, decreasing therefore the supply of money decreases during the contraction so though how government is balancing these two situation to control the supply of money during the expansion and to increase the supply of money during the contraction they takes these monetary measure so the first one is rediscount rate rediscount rate covers the uh, repo rate and the reverse repo rate and as we all know all the commercial bank charges uh, you know take loans from the central bank so whatever the money they are taking from the central bank they need to pay interest on it right and uh, to, uh, because of this payment of interest that depends upon the amount uh, about, uh, you know that depends upon the payment of interest how much loan these commercial banks are going to avail from the central bank and depending upon the amounts they are having available to the uh, to them they are going to distribute it further in the economy right so uh, repo rate is again important uh, the, the the government changes the repo rate at present the repo rate of the economy is uh, you know around 4% right uh, this is the repo rate which we are having this is around 3. Point, uh, you know 35% right now okay so what uh, government do is they make changes to this repo rate so that they can control the supply of money during the expansion and the contraction then we have this uh, you know reverse ra uh, reverse ratio reserve ratio sorry right we have these res uh, reserve ratios and here we have crr and slr how much uh, you know cash reserve ratios need to be maintained and how much slr ratio need to be maintained uh, with the banks right so that is statutory liquidity ratio and we have this cash reserve ratio so government make changes into these ratios as well to control the supply of money in the market at present the crr rate is 4% and the slr rate is 18% right then we have open market operations open market operations are basically the options which uh, government make available uh, uh, during the expansion phase so that people can easily invest their money into the purchase of government bonds and securities whereas they make them available uh, for the you know uh, sale purpose during the contraction phase so that the money supply can be increased and when we talk about the selective cre uh, credit control the selective credit control is again a policy taken up by the government where during the expansion phase they give uh, you know credit facility on a very selective basis right whereas during the contraction phase because already the money supply is lower in the market so they easily provide the credit facility to the people so that they can uh, bring the supply of money in the market right so these are the monetary measures and if you look at the fiscal measures so fiscal measures are here we divided into two, two categories we have public expenditure as well as public reserves right so as we all know uh, you know government start spending their uh, you know expenditure during the contraction phase because this is one way where the government can increase the supply of money in the market by spending more on the uh, development and infrastructure building of the economy where they can uh, you know create more employment opportunities which gives income to the people and therefore they are able to increase the money supply whereas during the 
expansion phase and to reduce this money supply government charges higher taxes from the people right so that they can have lesser disposable income and with less disposable income they would be able to spend lesser on the consumption of goods and services so these are some measures which are being taken up by the government depending upon the situations in the market uh, what to spend uh, how they are going to change uh, this expen uh, you know monetary and fiscal policy so this is all for our today's class if you look at the topics we have talked here we have talked about the nature and meaning of business cycle we have also discussed the different phases like expansion peak contraction and trough then we have talked about the effect of expansion uh, you know during expansion we uh, have inflation and competition increases in the economy during the recessions we usually faces the problem of excessive inventory deflation is there and retrenchment kind of situations are seen right therefore uh, to control these effects there are precautionary measures which are been taken up at the firm level as well as by the government this is all we have covered in our today's class so these are some reference books uh, for this lecture thank you all of you